on this episode of Patriot Games. Justin and a team of the industry's finest embark on their most ambitious build yet. With 400 horsepower, I'll put the batteries wherever they need to go. Yeah, that's it. But taking on a build of this magnitude isn't going to be easy. You've got a lot more gap that side. Are they going to fit? It's a lot of tyre. And a mega tight deadline leaves no room to move as skills and tempers are pushed to the limit. Let this thing say, bitch, and come up beside me. I want to see that track on the road. Sheet metal was my livelihood, but I never thought I'd be building gear like this. Every week, we turn tons of steel into rolling works of art. Some of the toughest gear in the world comes out of this factory. Building this gear is only half the fun. No one tests like we do. Mate. Dude, I'm my passion has taken my family to the edges of the earth. Watch the game. We know how to play it. Patriot Games. In 2015, Patriot Campers on the Gold Coast built the first Super Tourer and in doing so created a market for high-end, highly modified touring vehicles. But that was three years ago, and Justin's got an idea to build something that will take the 4x4 world by storm. Most people who know me know my brain never stops. In design, it's always at the forefront. Sarah and I have been travelling back and forth from America quite a lot over the past 12 months, and I'm starting to draw a little bit of inspiration from some of the trucks that I've seen at SEMA. Now, obviously, after getting back from Moab and seeing the four-wheel drive capabilities of the Jeeps, I really wanted to mix the two things together. I had a light bulb moment, a spark flew off. I thought, we're going to build the ultimate Land Cruiser. Now, since building the black track last year, we rattled the off-road industry. We come up with a concept of a 79 series Land Cruiser that blew everybody away. Aside from having the A-team at Patriot Campers, one of the things that pushes all of our products to the next level is having supplies that back us 100%. So when an idea pops into my head and I'll get that whole team involved, you know Patriot Campers is going to take it to the next level. The team at Patriot Campers plan to take a standard 79 series Toyota Land Cruiser and convert it into a six-wheel touring monster with eight inches of lift, custom sheet metal bodywork, and Justin's gathered the best of the best suppliers to help out. He's dubbed this one the Mega Tourer. We learn a lot from building the black truck and we're gonna stick to our streets. So we started off with picking up a brand new white LC79 GXL. Oh no. Oh no way. This is it boys. What the hell have you got here? The Patriot Mega Tourer. Mega Tourer. What? Mega Tourer. How do we raise the bar again? Well look, we got massive plans. So it's missing a couple of wheels. Oh really? I've been speaking to Jace, J Max. Six wheel drive with the whole out. Yeah? Six wheel drive want to do something completely different to the black truck. Exactly what happens at Patriot. One project finishes, another one starts instantly. Can't even get the boys ready to go for the next project. Is this guy for real? No, We've just got rid of the black truck no, no. three days ago. You know it has to be done. I know it has to be done, but like get done. we'll get it done. After Matt and Jack get the lowdown on Justin's new build, it's straight onto the truck to head up to renowned engine builders GSL. Now, first step of this build was to get the truck back to GSL. Scott and Luke, I've got a lot of faith in those two boys after what they did with the black truck and the beating that we gave it up in Cape York. Reliability has always been a big issue for me when building an off-road touring truck. But now I've got the faith in these guys, I'll let them go to town on it. So I made the phone call to the boys, Luke and Scott at GSL. These two guys, always willing to help out. So many last minute projects are always put on the two of them and you know what, they never ever let me down. Are we talking 300, <laughs> we're talking 300 at the wheels? 300 kilowatts at the wheels, yep. What's that in horsepower? 400. 400 horsepower in a 79? Yep. Single turbo diesel. The engine power from the factory can vary from vehicle to vehicle so the boys make a bet about how much power this 79 series will make. It's on to the dyno to see who wins. Do you even bother not, stra strapping not. down a standard one? <laughs> Usually not. Oh, my 
win. <laughs> I win. What did we get? 104? 104 in a steady So state. I was the closest. I told you it's a good one. That's a steady state. We don't go off yet. Yeah, so we don't go 300 off. kilowatts now. I want to see another 5% on top of that. Yeah. <laughs> Some of the ideas that the boys are pulling out on this truck, I'm really excited about. This is really going to take us to the next level in getting power, performance, and hopefully reliability out of this 300 kilowatt build. How, how are we going with the build, boys? Yeah, it's coming She's up. She's looking good. It's coming up pretty good, so. What's uh, this? We just finished the intake, lobster back to door, so it looks pretty wicked. Uh, we're going to continue that style the whole way through the build. So that's pretty your work, mate? Yeah, mate, that's a bit of more handy work there, so. That's pretty flash. You've got to get around that air con line there. Me and Scotty have nearly come to blaze a couple of days, like. <laughs> You know, but it is. That's what that's what family business is. You know, you you, you don't hide anything. It's, it's raw. You know, there's no holding back with your brother or your dad. You know. Oh look, we uh, we used to have a lot of competition in the welding um, side of things and a bit of banter and stuff like that. But yeah, he's, he's he's admitted defeat. So it's been a bit quiet the last month. Wouldn't you say? I said you just picked the easy one. You knew this was a pig. My role at GSL, um, yeah, it's. Some days, you know, you pull your hair out, trying to find somebody that's going to give you something when you need it. So we're getting to the end of the slower side of it, and it should be all full steam ahead from here. She's to, it's getting pretty exciting, so I can't wait to get this thing on the dyno. Justin leaves the 79 series with the boys from GSL to finish up the engine work. He's off to the States for work, and while he's away, the design team start their work with TJM on a new custom front bar. Design is my passion. That's where my heart is. I've got a lot of inspiration from some of the trucks I saw over in the United States. Now, I twisted TJM's arm, and we come up with a one-off concept for a brand new style of bull bar. I've got to cut this corner out, otherwise I'm going to gouge into the guard. First test fit was, like, pretty damn close. Just got to trim those wings up a little bit. If, if that's the only drama, sweet. We've got a small gap here, big gap here, etc. so... They've just got to get that right. Yeah, so we did the first test fit. Um, went well, uh, only minor changes, so we need to go back with all the measurements that we've taken, all the photos, uh, readjust the bar. Yep. Sort the fan right bay. OK. So this one's the first one. This is the prototype one, so this has been done, like, freehanded, just with a ruler and that and measured. If it fits good, they'll make a jig, so it's perfectly repeatable every time. Probably a bit wider than that. I mean, this, this will taper in as we come back to the bar. We're adding, adding 100 in here, so somewhere there. I think those, those flares are like 50 mil. We're running 130 mil flares. Yep. I just, as it comes around the front, I brought it tapered in yeah. so the bar didn't look stupidly skinny and stupidly wide. A custom vehicle like that deserves its own custom bull bar, so we made one straight from the start. So we went, start with ideas. What do you like, what do you don't like? Build it. <laughs> the whole design team at TJM really pulled together. We made bunch of concept, some amazing, some not so much. Um, Widen the bar up with the new flares that it's going to have. So we stuck the, the LED lights all the way in. Just, just the whole wacky out there concept. Something really good, something really new. It's going to really speak to the uniqueness of this vehicle. The boys from GSL have finished their engine work and Justin picks up the truck from their workshop in Grantham. On the way back, Justin and Jack stop by TJM for a final fitting of the prototype bar. Hey, how you going, buddy? How's that for timing? Fantastic, mate. How you going? Yeah. Chris. Hello. Chris, this is Jack. G'day, Jack. How are you, buddy? Yeah, so good, Jack's dude. one of the engineers for Patriot Campers. He's the guy who's controlling the six-wheel drive, all the design stuff for me. Six-wheel drive is out the back. Big nice. Do you want to go and have a look? Yeah. Hello. Let's go. Yeah. Come on. Jack and the guys here at TJM, they've come together, they've collaborated, they've built a brand new product off the back of what TJM already does, but with our Patriot Campers flavour. And I, I couldn't be happier. Still working on it, hey? How are you, mate? Good, mate. How are you? How's it looking? Awesome. <laughs> uh-huh. A lot of hours have gone into this. I mean, machining alone was three, three hours. Then you've got all the engineering work, the tweaks, the changes, the adjustments. Being the new guy, a lot of the bull bars always look the same to me. Yeah. And now as each month goes on, you see something different. You see something change. And, uh, yeah, this is miles ahead, isn't it? This is nice. Ride your quarter so you don't scratch your quarter. Yeah, I like it. It's much bigger than what I thought it was going to be, but it fits well. I hope Justin's happy with it, because if he's not, I'm the one in trouble. <laughs> 
Look, my biggest concern with this bar is with the 79 series, the way that the front end's um, set up, you can't get a winch in underneath the front clip. So you've, you've got to push that winch out, out past the car, which is why you see all 79s have got a really deep bar. Look, I, I think that um, I think we've got it right, but until we've got the finished product, until we actually see it together, everything painted and the accessories fitted, we're not really going to know. That went good, man. You like it? Yeah, man. Happy? I'm, I'm actually, I'm happy. I think it's, I think it's going to look better than we, than we both think, eh? Hey? The Mega Tourer build is starting to come together. The GSL engine work is completed and the TJM custom bar is fitted and ready for the final touches. Ever since I've known Justin, he loves his toys and he who dies with the most toys wins, is what I'm told. To be honest, I'm sick of hearing about this truck. I couldn't wait for it to come back to Patriot HQ so he could have a play with it. All right, mate, let's go get in. Go and drive it. <laughs> It's still early days in the build, but with the GSL engine work completed, Justin gives the boys at work something to cheer about. It's time to rid the 79 series of its stock rear tyres. Anyone that knows Justin knows he always likes to push the limits. He get all the boys out from HQ, and yes, he loves the smell of burnt rubber. That just went, we got it. <laughs> That's the tie blind. Stay sorted out, I've got some work to do. <laughs> All right, guys, the fun stuff is done now. We've got to get this thing stripped down. Yep. Yeah, this has got to be at the painters tomorrow. Now, I'm going to take a little bit of a gamble on this truck. I've come up with this custom colour, and everybody is doubting me. Next stop, one of my oldest mates, Cam, at Snow's Body Works. So I've known Justin over 15 years. He's always had something on the go, and uh, it always gets bigger and better the next one. We follow that line there. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good idea. Right follow here. that line all the way through there. Yeah. Just wait. We'll go grey up to here and then black in the centre. I've never painted a car this colour, so it will be different, but I think once it's all stick it up and wheels are on it, I think it'll look quite good. The boys at Snow Body Works roll the truck into the spray booth for two coats of primer and two coats of concrete grey for a high gloss finish. It takes a couple of days, but with the paintwork done, Justin's back to pick up the truck. Dude, sick Justin. job. <laughs> That's good, you, eh? Mate? That looks unbelievable, man. Good. Hey, Matty, how are you? Absolutely <laughs> wrapped. This has come up. Mate, the bonnet looks brilliant. Yeah. Too, right? yeah? Yeah, it looks good. How'd you go under the bonnet? Did our best. Oh, yes, mate. Just laid all this over. What white truck? You wouldn't know, yeah. No, nah, you wouldn't even know, dude. No. What do you reckon? You like it? Yeah, I like it, yeah. Yeah? I reckon it's going to look good with big black wheels. And... Yeah, man. It looks awesome. Everyone's a little unsure about Justin's colour choice for the Mega Tourer, but he's stuck to his guns and the result speaks for itself. Or does it? What were you expecting? More shiny. I was expecting uh, not primer. It's not primer. <laughs> it's flat <plain> silver. <laughs> I thought you were just going outside and door jams and that was it. I'm not excited. Yeah, I'm impressed. I mean, I didn't think, I thought they were just going to do a closed door, just paint the outside and the door jams maybe, and then it's engine bay, it's inside, it's roof, it's everything. Looks good. I think if Justin follows it down like he said he will, with body colour bull bar and then the black grill, it'll look awesome. That's really good. That's cool. With the exterior styling done, it's time to tackle the interior. Justin wants the inside of the Mega Tourer to be just as high-end as the outside. So he's bought the 79 series to local leather man, Simon from Trimworks. Hi, my name's Simon Goodbun and I run a company called Trimworks and we're from Arundel, Gold Coast, Queensland. All right, time frame? Oh, six months. Good, done. I'll see you in a week. <laughs> yeah? Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Eves, mate. See you Monday. We've got a week. Give me a look. There's, there's, the, there's the good stuff. Yeah. That's your old stuff. Yeah. Now this is what we've started uh -huh. to turn it into. Yes. So here's your black knuckle leather. Yep. Here's your suede. How's that? 
That's as smooth as a baby's bum, hey, Mia? Certainly is. The inside of the Mega Tourer will be wrapped in super soft Nappa leather and accented with suede and yellow stitching throughout. I heard that you got something to show the kids while we're here. Oh, we do. Some uh, wildlife? Yeah. Hmm. Let's have a look, guys. What do you reckon? They're pretty cool, huh? They grow them really big and then they use them for trimming. That's awesome, aren't they? Yeah. That's really cool. You get a little bit excited. Roar! Roar! Today was a big day. The biggest part of this build is now turning up. Jason from J-Max has brought down the 6x6 kit. Oh, J-Max is here. It's big. big. <laughs> Now, we came up with this concept about 12 months ago. We've worked together pretty heavily, and we're going to bring this to life. We've rolled in this morning with the, uh, the chassis section of the new six-wheel drive conversion. So the boys already had the truck tray off. So basically, we've cut back into the chassis off, Taking out the tank, diff all the bits. If it kicks, got to hang on to it, OK? All right, that's it. So turn him on. Hand on here. Hang on to that. Use that to lean on. The Super Tourer team are no strangers to cutting cars in half, but the Mega Tourer is Justin's personal car, so the boys leave the steel cutting to one of the twins. That's where you want it cut, wasn't it? Yeah, I certainly hope so. You're the one telling the story. <laughs> I don't want to go through the whole bind another Land Cruiser again. Cut the chassis, redressed it all, and the new 6x6 conversion slides over the existing chassis, clamps in place, and then gets welded off. Walking over here now and seeing it getting welded on, it's getting pretty exciting. Hopefully the start, we'll be able to roll it around and see what the turning circle's like. <laughs> the logistics that are going into this build are pretty hardcore. Planning's been over six months. Now, whilst we got the crew cutting up the chassis and fitting the extension, I've got the diffs down in Melbourne. They're getting fitted out with a set of portal axles from Mark's four-wheel drive. The Mega Tourer's engine work is done and the chassis extension from J-Max is now completed, ready for the custom diffs and portal axles from Mark's four-wheel drive. They turn up just in time and Justin delivers fresh off the truck. Now, the biggest point of difference with this truck Mechanically, over anything else that we've ever built in the 79 series, this one's now featuring portal axles from Mark's four-wheel drive down to Melbourne. Now, the boys down at Mark's, they have done an absolutely amazing job in introducing portal axles into the Australian market. Do you even know what this is? Yes. Yeah. It's, uh, it's, it's axles. Um, axles with uh, four-inch portal hubs. That's my dog. Portal axle, it drops the centre of your wheel down four inches, 100 millimetres. So you get a lot more clearance under your diff centre, but you're not going to bottom out on rocks or anything else like that. We're going to be running big 37-inch tyres. It's going to take a lot of power to turn those tyres. Basically, the boys down at Mark's done the calculations for me. With the 16% reduction on 37s, the car's going to perform like it's driving on 31s. If this falls, not my fault. Yep, go. Go, 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 go. That's it. And away we go. Um, so away we go. That's away. Damn twins, eh? <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> Got shocks. The entire suspension system on this build is a complete one-off. This has been one of the biggest parts of R&D that we're going to have to put into this after the truck's finished. We've teamed up with Airbag Man for a full airbag suspension system, completely programmable. Now, coupled to that, we've got TJM Custom Shocks. This is a product they've been working on to release into the Australian market, and we're going to be the guinea pigs. This is the new mega top secret project from TJM. That's right. This been is, hush hush. How long have you been working on this for me? Three years now. Three years. Yeah. And we're number one. Of course. Number one in of course. I love yeah. that. Yeah? That's that's for you, my boy. I'm Nguyen Ta and I work for TJM Products. I'm the suspension engineer there. To have adjustable damping, it'll allow you to uh, tune your car and dial your car in to however you like it. So some people like their car a bit softer, some people like 
their car a bit firmer, so the car handles better. It's all down to personal preference. The only hard part is mounting the reservoir, and that's still pretty easy. Yeah, we've got vehicle-specific brackets for it. Yes, yeah, so the advantages of having an adjustable shop off-road is you can, um, you can make the suspension softer, so um, you can climb over your imperfections off-road, whereas on-road you want it to um, be a bit firmer so that your roll holding is nice and tight so you can go around the corners. With TJM's brand new suspension fitted, Justin's brought in a surprise for the Patriot boys. The team have been questioning Justin about which springs he'll use on the Mega Tourer. The boys have been hammering me over the past couple of days about where are the springs, where are the springs. They don't really right. know what's going on. Yep. We're going with air all the way around, airbags. We're down here doing the beginning of an install on the custom airbag set up into the 6x6. Special engineered bump stops. Oh, shit, yeah. So when you jump it, that's what you're going to land on. And, it, and we will be jumping it. Awesome. Airbag's basically too long. The spring seats like drop down about that much, so we need to cut the spring seat out, move it back up, and weld it back in. Otherwise, we're just going to lose too much travel. It's all a custom fit, though, so no one's ever done it before. Two days fitting airbags definitely wasn't in the plan. It's just pushing it out so far. Just raise the one side. I'm actually surprised how quick it is. I thought it was going to be a heap slower. Yeah, we've got some really good gear in there. We've got a, a really powerful air supply on there, so we've got enough air to run the six bags, be able to blow tyres up. We've got twin tyre outlets on the vehicle, one for each side. So, yeah, you've got a nice, powerful uh, air system on board there. We're doing all of the suspension drive line work, and they want a custom gear knob, so we'll do something trick. These are the portals from Mark's adapters. Because we're going big six-piston WP Pro calipers, they didn't really fit with the rear mounts. So now we're running six front mounts. There's some seriously nice machining in these bits. Two days ago, fitting the airbags, I was just cursing airbags all day long. I was hating it. But now that, now that they're in there and I've seen the, seen the Land Rover doing this thing on air, I think, well worth it. This is the uh, custom made Brown Davis tank for our 6x6. It's, it's empty. Ready? One, two, three, go. It's a pretty good build so far. You know, we've got a long way to go and, you know, hopefully we get it done. But what we're doing so far, it's, it's good. It looks awesome. I've we'll been working back and forth with Brown Davis really closely on these builds. Our Super Tour range has got a lot of custom tanks. We've got a really good relationship there. They send me CAD, I modify it to suit how we want it, then send it back to them and they make it within a week. It's really good. I don't think you grabbed enough washers. You know what? There's enough washers. Steve's finished the modifications on the bracket at the front just because we've got a transfer handbrake on it now. Obviously, because the running portals in the rear can't use factory handbrake anymore. So, let's go fit it. The advantage of running two tanks is if the rear one gets a hole in us for some reason, we've got 55 back up down the side, and this one's really well protected. Uh, we're going to do a bash plate under the rear tank as well, because Justin seems to break stuff really easily. <laughs> The underside of the Mega Tourer is just about finished, with suspension, shocks, fuel tanks and portal axles all going in over a matter of days. It's time to head up to Express Metal Products, Justin's sheet metal business. The sheet metal aspect, the design, going through the whole manufacturing process and seeing it come together, that's the best part of any build. It's not something that we buy and we bolt onto the truck, it's something that sincerely comes from the heart. Sheet metal? Well, that's in my blood. I'm a third generation Australian manufacturer. And that's where all of this started, where it all came from. How are you, mates? Going good, man. How are you? What's happening? It's all happening. Yeah? All happening. You got some six wheel drive parts for us or yeah, what? Mate. We're all ready to go. You want to come out and have a look? Really? Oh, yeah. I'm John O. Horton, General Manager of Express Metal Products. The processes we use here at Express Metal Products are flatbed laser cutting and uh, bending and sheet metal components. Now, we have the technology with Express Metal Products that we control the whole process. We know with our design now, if something's going to work prior with all of the software that we use. And that's where Jack comes into it. That's it, man. That's where it's at. Yes. 
Now, when you put Jack and I together and sheet metal is involved, we'll come up with something you've never seen before. We are the innovators, and sheet metal design will always be at the heart of Patriot Camp. Trying to give it a right. Yep, it has. Everything's going pretty good. Looks sweet. So I definitely just scared the absolute daylights out of all the boys. I come out here, I had a quick look at the tray. To me, it was just it was just too long. It looked completely out of proportion. That's where the back of your tray is right there. Yeah. Pretty much in line with that. So we've done a quick mock-up. We put the wheels underneath it. We put some of the other body panels on there. You know what? Jack's nailed it. As usual, I know I gave him a fright. Jack looks like he's seriously about to cry. Well, there's going to be a tear like rolling down his eye in a minute, and he knows he's not going to leave here for the next week. It's coming along nicely now. We're all getting parts, and everything's just coming the way it should. This is where the awesomeness comes out of. Stacks, rolling coal. Sweet. Morning. How's things? Good, looking good. When I found out we're running portals and 37s, I knew I had to make some really wide guards. Justin wanted some nice folded sheet metal ones, and when he, I mean, when he first said it, I kind of thought just, you know, a strip. This one's more art than science, I think. Yeah. <laughs> Sweet. That's not that sort of car. It's not like a 1990s ghetto fab car. Not so much nervous being Justin's car, just any car, you know, being a new car and being fresh paint and ready to go, so it's always a bit of a worry. Someone wanted four batteries. That's why it's so packed out in there. For the remote destination touring that we do, power is so important to me on any build of a touring truck. Now, in this one, I think we've gone a little bit overboard. I thought there'd be heaps of room for the wiring harness, but then this is only the airbag wiring harness. The tray assembly is complete, and it's time to fit it to the chassis. The next step is to start the meticulous job of wiring the batteries to all electrical components. And then I'm going to put K's on it. Of course you want to put K's on it. It's a show car, dude. That's, that's no, what knowing you, it will never be showroom condition. Look at your black truck. That's what everyone said about the black truck. Oh, oh it's a show car. That, that thing will never get dead. We've got two lithium revolution batteries under the train. That's going to power the entire truck. Then we've got two start batteries. We've gone with an AGM on those as well, just to give us that little bit extra power. Got a lot of stuff crammed into such a small space. It makes my big sausage fingers work a little bit harder. Along my travels, I've run into this new company in Australia, WP Pro Brakes. Now, these guys are really onto it. Oi, Jack. Yeah. Come check this out, mate. What do you got? Got a present for you. Always like presents. They're, they're here, mate. You've waited long enough. The 79 Series Land Cruiser, it doesn't stop. There's not a lot you can do about it. We've gone with the J-Max Brake Booster, but we've gone with six pot calipers and 360 mil rotors to pull this thing up like a V8 supercar. Hi, I'm Spinner from WP Pro Brakes Australia. Uh, we've just made this awesome kit for Patriot campers. You think she's going to stop all right? I don't know, eh? <laughs> Dude, that is off the chain. Yeah. The things that we've done differently for Patriot's project is we've taken away the OEM Toyota braking system which is a lot smaller, smaller pads, smaller calipers, smaller rotors. So we're expecting really, really awesome braking from this kit. I'm bleeding brakes at the moment. Um, it's going to take a fair while because six calipers and no fluid. My hands are like almost cramped already. I've got another hour of this to go. <laughs> oh, come on. Trying to bleed brakes and I was getting air bubbles still. So I checked it down due to the fluid on the floor and I found a flare that's not quite right, so I'm just going to take that hose out, cut the end off and reflare it, and hopefully that'll fix our drama. I haven't found any other leaks, it's just the one. This is great news. Now, keeping with the full custom theme, we weren't going to do the same thing that we've done on other trucks with the Rhino Rax Pioneer platform. They need, they need to be staggered. Yeah. It doesn't, they, they're sitting flush, it doesn't look right. Nah, 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 just, just offset, you know what I mean? Yeah, we'll it's make, it, make a custom bracket. Jack and I got together. We came up with a concept of sheet metal sides to integrate all of the X-ray lights. We 
got to get the gap between the two lights as close as possible. If we go, yeah, half the light, 40 mil, keep them butted up as close as they can, and this one just sitting, sitting there. Custom made brackets, we got painted this morning, and just like everything on this truck, custom. And everything on this truck, gloss black. <laughs> Countless hours have already gone into this build. The team at Patriot have been working day and night to get the Mega Tourer ready for its debut at the 4x4 show in Melbourne. The Mega Tourer is nearly complete, and this six wheel 79 series is about to get one of its most important and stylish finishing touches. With the help of the reduction gears in the portal axles, I could go as big a tyre as I wanted. And with Mickey Thompson's, I've been using those guys really from day one. Still to this day, I've never changed the tyre on any of my trucks touring. Why would I go with anything else? Whoa. Whoa. Are they gonna fit? Maybe? We'll see. I don't know. You calculate everything, you, you know, you put it on and you work out that it's gonna fit, but you never really know because you stick it on. That's a long tyre, eh? The back wheels won't rub or contact, but they might stick out a little bit. I wanted something that again wasn't available off the shelf. So we air freighted in from the US a set of 37 by 13 and a half inch Mickey Thompson MTZ. RIH wheels are constantly developing new products. Now the boys showed me a while ago a design of a new wheel they were thinking about bringing into the Australian market. So these are our new rim we're going to go with. Good. Nice That's good. Nice when we decided on this build, I had to have those rims. So a couple of phone calls and another twisted arm. I've got a custom set of wheels made in a custom offset just to suit this truck. The whole team are racing to the finish line, so everyone gets involved in fitting the new wheels and tyres to the Mega Tourer. Wheels have just gone on the back for the first time and it's pretty cool, eh? <laughs> How you going, man? Hey, mate, how you going? Good. Excited, yes. All the Red Arc gear. Red Arc Electronics are one of our closest affiliates. We use all of their products in our entire range. Our camper trailers, our toy haulers, and our super tourers. So they're definitely the natural choice to control the Mega Tourers power station. Uh, Joel, we're from Red Arc Electronics. Uh, we're here helping Justin do the, the build on the truck today. Quality is imperative to Red Arc. Well, that's what we really strive for, is uh, quality for the build and also uh, reliability of the product. So that's, uh, that's part of our core. So we got Boost and EGT, and then we got our oil pressure and our water temp right there. And then in our T console, we'll have the bolt gauge up just up top. there. Yeah, just up there. So today, we're gonna finish all our interior wiring, all the Red Arc gear, the amp, just to get it all done because we are under the pump and we've got a lot to finish. With the deadline looming, the pressure is building for Jackson. He's realised he's missed something crucial and it looks like he'll have to redo the wiring. That wiring half front of I can't, it's behind the wall. Oh, uh, you... Yep, that's something you want to do in class. Yeah, nah. Me not thinking I put my wire from my battery straight to the BMS, not fusing it. So now I have to redo my work. Disconnect, cut, rerun. Oh, the joys. It's all hands on deck as the boys race to finish the build before the Mega Tourer heads back to GSL to complete the exhaust and engine tune. So what we're doing today is we're focusing on the front end, gonna get the winch, the lights, the bull bar all in. How am I supposed to get that bolt in, man? I like it. I reckon it looks unreal. All the way up. We're aiming to have a, a minimum height, like a park, minimum loading type height. Enough wheel travel to make it nice and comfortable on the road, uh, but also nice and stable. And then an elevated height just to give maximum off-road clearance. We're throwing everything we can at this project. Staff working overtime, people from the office are out there working on the car. We've got suppliers in here doing their bit to get it finished. Do you know what it's gonna look like in here? Porn star. That's it. Right. everywhere. Yeah. Porn star. Damn, that's a nice seat. Filling up all the diff oils, the hubs, 
Because normally everyone does the double light bar on top. Well, we ain't everyone. Exactly, we go over the top. That's all we're known for. Now it's coming down to the wire. This is the end of it. The big mega 6x6 six six is going back to JSL for the final tune. They're going to finish up the exhaust. We'll get it back in here, get the interior complete, and it's good to go. The boys have just done an absolutely amazing job getting this thing done. Today we did uh, tune on it. As far as I'm concerned, it, it's, it's worked out pretty well for the amount of fuel that we've had to play with. It's a weapon to drive, so I could only imagine what it's going to be like in the mud. Like, it'd be heaps of fun. He's going to have a ball in it. <laughs> How do we go with the uh, the tune, the dyno? I think for the amount of fuel that it's that it's letting us have at this stage with the injectors that we got in, I mean we can make changes and, and send cabs back to the stakes and go again. Considering what what work's been done to the car, that's that's a good outcome. Justin's reaction to this, I hope, is good. I think he'd be crazy not to like it. So yeah, I think he's he's really going to get a kick out of this, and and uh, I'm jealous that it's not mine. So. If he doesn't like it, just swing him my way. <laughs> the Mega Tourer is trucked back to Patriot HQ with little time to spare. The 4x4 show deadline is approaching. But Justin throws one more thing at the boys. Felt like there was something missing on the tray. We got on the phone, called the boys down at Polaris. What do you know? Next morning, a surprise arrives. Who, who's not busy? Don't you have enough toys? Dude. You can't have enough toys, are you kidding? As if we're not stressed and rushed enough, we have to build this Polaris 1000 to go on the back of the 6x6. Ready to go, mate. Oh, man. Hey? You don't want to wait like 10 minutes so I can go for a ride? No, 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 I'll, I'll test it. I'll, I'll are you see sure? I'll, I'll do quality assurance for you. Have you started it yet? No. It can't be work all the time. We do love our toys, and every now and again, Got to let the boys have a little bit of fun. Dude, the thing hauls ass. In true Patriot Campers fashion, we can't leave anything alone. We went to town on the scrambler. New wrap, new wheels, new tyres, and a custom paint job. Now the build's nearing the end, I think I'm up in everyone's faces. The boys want to see me gone, so why not? This weekend, I'm going racing. Boys from Polaris, after our success at Fink, they've invited me back for a round of the side-by-side -side championship. Now, this is completely different racing. In Fink, you're really battling yourself. You're battling the clock. Out here, you're battling nine other drivers on one track with big jumps. It's going to be a real fun day, and I'll see if I've still got it or not. what's going on and bam, roll over. I freak out, the kids are like, woo, I caught that on camera. <laughs> but hey, I got on film. It's D-Day for the mega tourer to hit the road. As the team are fitting the final components, Justin's teed up a fitting mode of transport to get it down to the Melbourne 4x4 show. Today was the day for the first road test of the mega 6x6 and just in time. I've got to get this thing down to the Melbourne 4x4 show. So Jack and I jumped in the truck We've ran it up the highway, but I'd pulled a few strings. I had another surprise. How you going, Dean? How are you, boys? Good, mate. Good to see you. Yeah, you too. Dean, this is Jack. Jack, how are you, mate? Nice looking rig you got there. Hey, we heard on the grapevine that Justin was in a jam. Uh, we got the call and, hey, we're happy to step up for a fellow Queenslander. All I can say is, uh, mate, please don't take it down Cheers. up to the Cape. I can't <laughs> make any guarantees. Does this thing have a GPS tracker in it? Yeah, it does, actually. We've got a geo-fenced. Yeah. Yeah. When we get back to the workshop, Jack, get one of the boys to cut yeah. that out. <laughs> How many wheels have you got on your truck? I've got 18, dude. That's still good enough to keep me happy. Uh, 
All right, so this is it. We're off to the Melbourne 4x4. The truck's finally built. The boys have pulled out absolutely every single stop to get this thing done. We've just done the final load up. And this whole program, this rig, I'm probably more excited about the drive down there than actually getting to the Melbourne 4x4. We're launching the 6x6 at the Melbourne show. I'm coming down, not Ashton, because I'm the nap man. It's time to hit the road. Justin and Christian have a two-day drive to Melbourne. And while Justin's no stranger to banking a few Ks, he's feeling nervous about revealing the mega tourer to the world. All right, so this is it. We're bumped in. We're here at the Melbourne 4x4 show. We're ready to release this truck to the world. It's been a monumental effort from the whole team at Patriot Campers. Christian, my nerve man, the drive down. Now we're about to release this thing to the world and we'll see what the response is going to be like. Right now at the moment, on the 37s, it's making 237 kilowatts at the back wheels. So four years, look at what Justin's created. This is a phenomenon. But more importantly now, the trucks, the 79 series, is very popular all around the world. This is something no one else has done. This is probably the best 79 series anywhere in the world. Something else is probably a bit surreal and it hasn't really settled in. It is insane. I think it's just a magnificent piece of Australian ingenuity. This thing has not been built for show, let me assure you. We'll do some testing over the next couple of months, and then you'll see what this truck is actually capable of. Thank you very much, guys. Thanks for coming out. Well, here it is. Patriot campers have done it again. The Mega 6x6. Took a standard 79 and did what no one's ever done. With the six wheel drive kit and the big tyres, we knew we were going to need some serious power. So we took it out to GSL and the boys went to town. Big turbo, twin stack four inch exhaust. We've gone away from the typical matte black Patriot campus theme. For this one, we wanted something different. So we started with a full respray in a custom China grey. Nothing standard was ever going to suit, so we worked with TJM, custom bar work, to accommodate the wider track. I've been working with J-Max for about 12 months on doing something completely different with the 79. Cut a brand new car in half and welded on a new chassis. Something else different than no one's done before, I thought the 6x6 needed a set of portal axles. So I hooked up with the boys for Mark's four-wheel drive. We've got all the extra diff clearance and the reduction gears to run the 37s. We've already taken it this far, and the 79s, they don't stop with four wheels. So I engaged the boys from WP Pro. They hooked us up with a set of six pot calipers and 330 mil rotors. The whole setup's right in on air. ECU controlled from Airbag Man. Custom matched TJM monotube remote reservoir shocks. And the boys have given me three levels of ride height. Go from four to six to eight inches of lift. This truck's got the sexiest rear end on the road. We've got twin 37s up on the deck, mounted race truck style to the Patriot Mini Canopy. The vision for a project like this doesn't come together overnight. So I put Jack to work and let him do what he does best. This project was all consuming. We took the Super Tour tray, redesigned it with a new look, and then custom sheet metal front flares for the wider track. Adding to the custom sheet metal, we did fuel tanks with Brown Davis, and custom mounts for the Rhino Rack platform. And integrating into that platform, and the front bar, we've put in a full suite of X-ray lights. We work with the team at ROH, who custom built us a one-off set of 18 by nine inch vapors. We wrap them in 37 by 13 and a half inch Mickey Thompson MTZs. Now the 79 series is definitely no luxury truck. We replaced the factory front seats with something a bit more comfortable. And then the team at Trimworks wrapped everything they could in black leather, black suede, and yellow stitching. The amount of electronics that we fitted into this rig and just the cabling alone was something reminiscent of a Boeing aircraft. The standard stereo went in the bin and we got the full suite from Alpine. It definitely wouldn't be a Patriot Super Tourer without front and rear torque winches. And for this truck here, to keep the front clean, we mounted the GME whip on the headboard of the tray. Now, when I delivered all of the Red Arc boxes out into the factory, I definitely saw a few of the boys get nervous. We turned this thing into a rolling power plant. Custom sheet metal installation to hide all the gear behind the seats and the revolution lithium batteries under the tray. Now we're getting pretty well known for our toys. And when I saw that big empty space up on the deck, I made a phone call to Polaris and they hooked me up with a brand new Scrambler 1000. Working with the best tradesmen in the industry, my team's killed it. And we've reset the standard for Australian off-roading. And we handpicked the best suppliers who are at the top of their game to make this monster build happen. Now the Mega Tour is complete, 
We've already got the next build plan. But first, we need to get this engineered and complied for Australian roads. Like the black truck, this beast hasn't been built just for show. And we're going to prove what it can do on season two of Patriot Games. Well, that's a wrap. Season one of Patriot Games is now officially over. And I hope you guys enjoyed watching it just as much as we enjoyed filming it. And we've had an absolute blast doing it. From Cape York to Moab to Fink to building the ultimate mega tourer, the biggest thank you has to go to everybody who's watched the series. Now, we've rubbed shoulders all over the world the past 12 months with a new fan base, as well as all of the suppliers that have been involved. These guys are involved with Patriot Campers Day today and backed us to create this series. The trips we do are about exploring the world with our family and our friends. This season, I took my family to the edges of the earth, but wait and see where we go next. I ain't looking for children.